Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. Recently, according to the US National Defense Monthly, by 2030, the US semiconductor industry is expected to be short of 67,000 technical talents, covering multiple fields such as manufacturing engineers, software engineers and computer scientists. More broadly speaking, the entire US economy will face a talent gap of up to 1.4 million. This situation reflects that college graduates in the United States can no longer meet domestic market demand. If this talent shortage problem cannot be effectively solved, the US chip industry will be at a disadvantage in global competition due to a lack of talent. It is worth noting that the United States has long been a popular country for global talent gathering. Every year, hundreds of thousands of people compete to apply for U.S. immigrant visas, including outstanding graduates from the world's top universities. However, the United States is now facing a talent shortage, with a gap of up to 1 million, and even its proud chip industry has been affected. What exactly caused this? On April 16, 2018 and December 1 of the same year, two major events broke out one after another, marking the official start of the U.S. technology war against China. On April 16, 2018, the U.S. Department of Commerce imposed a seven-year export ban on ZTE, forcing ZTE's A and H shares to be suspended. In the end, ZTE succumbed to the pressure, paid a huge fine, and accepted U.S. supervision. On December 1 of the same year, Canadian authorities arrested Meng Wanzhou, Huawei's CFO and daughter of Ren Zhengfei, at the airport. Although Huawei stood firm and did not compromise, it lost its chip foundry qualification and some 5G accessories supply, and was included in the entity list by the United States for sanctions. In the ZTE incident, China chose to swallow its anger, in the Huawei incident, China adhered to the bottom line. But then, the United States successively included Chinese companies such as SMIC, Yangtze Memory, and Shanghai Microelectronics in the entity list, and restricted American companies such as NVIDIA, Intel and Qualcomm from selling advanced computing chips and 5G chips to China. After China's unremitting efforts, Huawei finally obtained the 4G mobile phone processor supplied by Qualcomm and was able to continue its mobile phone business, and NVIDIA also launched the adjusted, shrunken version, A800H800 GPU to cope with market changes. In the first half of this year, under the continuous pressure and inducement of the United States, Japan and the Netherlands also successively introduced export restrictions on semiconductor equipment. Without permission, the export of the following equipment will be prohibited, including equipment for the production of 14 nanometers per 16 nanometers logic chips, equipment for the manufacture of NAND flash above 128 layers, and equipment for the production of 18 nanometers and below DRAM memory. In response, China quickly took measures and announced strict control of imported rare materials such as gallium and germanium, and no arbitrary export without approval. This time the United States was really caught off guard, because China accounts for 90% of the world's gallium production, and 72% of germanium production, and exports 94% of gallium and 82% of germanium. Once China's supply is interrupted, the consequences will be unimaginable. Major companies urgently counted their stocks, and were horrified to find that the existing gallium and germanium stocks could not support a year at all. The reserves of Japanese companies were only enough to last for three months, and the stocks of the Netherlands could not even last for a month. AXT, an American wafer manufacturer, disregarded its face and hurriedly asked its subsidiary in China to apply for a license to export gallium and germanium products. At the same time, companies in Europe, Japan, South Korea, and other countries also applied to China for export exemptions for gallium and germanium. However, their request was rejected. The United States had no choice but to push the responsibility to the Netherlands, and the Netherlands quickly threw this thorny issue to the European Union. In the face of interests, they swarmed up, 
but when they encountered problems, they shirked each other. This is undoubtedly a true portrayal of the so-called great power style. At this time, Chinese experts also expressed their views in a timely manner. This is just the beginning of China's countermeasures, and China still has many means to go. Look at those overseas chip giants, their recent financial reports can be described as bleak. In the first quarter of this year alone, four chip companies including Samsung, Intel, SK Hynix, and Micron lost a total of 77.9 billion yuan, setting a record for the highest loss in decades. Now you should understand why the technology giants in Silicon Valley have been laying off employees on a large scale since last year. They laid off tens of thousands of employees at any time, with layoffs as high as 20%, 30%, and even 80% in some cases, because their losses are too serious. However, this large-scale layoff also brings a serious problem, talent shortage. And it is a large talent shortage. Some netizens may ask, since there is a shortage of people, why not recruit those laid-off employees back? But things are not that simple. Capitalists will not easily agree to re-recruit those laid-off employees, and there are indeed some inefficient employees among them. For example, Twitter had 8,000 employees before being acquired by Musk, but now there are only 1,500 left, but work is still going on normally. Therefore, the United States is now facing a very embarrassing problem, on the one hand, a large number of workers are unemployed and the unemployment rate is rising, on the other hand, there is a serious shortage of technical talents, and the total gap is expected to reach an astonishing 1.4 million by 2030. So, how to solve this problem? One possible solution is to relax immigration policies and vigorously introduce talents. Although the United States is still one of the preferred countries for global immigrants, this status is quietly changing. As the world's only superpower, the United States has maintained a clear leading advantage in many fields such as finance, military, and technology. The number of Nobel Prize winners born in its history ranks first in the world. In terms of education, the comprehensive strength of American universities is far superior to other countries. These factors together make the United States one of the most popular immigration countries in the world. However, judging from immigration data in recent years, although China is still one of the important source countries of immigrants to the United States, the number of immigrants is significantly less than that of Mexico and India. This reflects that Chinese immigrants may be more cautious and diversified when choosing an immigration country. At the same time, in terms of work immigration, the number of immigrants from China is relatively small, accounting for only about 27% of all work immigrants, while the number of immigrants from India is as high as 91,000. This further suggests that the United States may be facing increasing competition in attracting high-end global talent. Therefore, in order to solve the current talent shortage and maintain its global leadership, the United States may need to more actively adjust its immigration policies to attract more outstanding talents. According to statistics in recent years, from 2015 to 2019, about 27% of Tsinghua University's undergraduate graduates, 6% of master's graduates, and 11% of doctoral graduates chose to go abroad for further studies. Similarly, during this period, Peking University also showed a similar trend, with about 31% of undergraduate graduates, 5% of master's graduates, and 11% of doctoral graduates choosing to study abroad. It is worth noting that among these international students from Tsinghua and Peking University, as many as 70% chose the United States as their study destination, followed by the United Kingdom, Japan, Germany and France. Because of this, Tsinghua and Peking University were once jokingly called the talent pool of the United States. However, since 2020, this trend has begun to change significantly. From 2020 to 2022, the proportion of Tsinghua University graduates who choose to study abroad has dropped to less than 15%, which is undoubtedly a positive change.
If China simply attributes this change to the reduced willingness to go abroad due to the mask problem, it is obviously a superficial understanding of the true motivations of these graduates. I firmly believe that with the increasingly fierce technological competition between China and the United States and the challenges facing the Chinese chip industry, the outstanding students of Tsinghua and Peking University will not remain indifferent. On the contrary, more and more of them will choose to stay in China and contribute to China's scientific and technological cause, especially to the rise of China's chip industry. It is precisely with the advantage of talent that China's chip industry is expected to achieve a complete turnaround.